and welcome back to the Reapers. So we're in our AV-8B Harrier and today we're looking at the AIM MG-122 Sidearm. So the Sidearm is an anti-radiation seed missile designed to attack hostile radars. That could be SAM sites or could be early warning radars or radar driven AAA sites. Anything with a radar basically. And it's not just hostile, it will also attack friendly radars as well. It's got no distinguishment between friendly and foe, so that's something to bear in mind. So let's go to the arming screen. We can have them on pylons. One, two, uh, sorry, one, two, six and seven. So why don't we just missiles AGM-122, let's just have two of them, I think that's all we need for this. Now whenever we do a mission with sidearms, we're usually going to want to tie in another item, which is the DECM pod. So if we look here, we go DECM pod, which is the uh, counters measure, jamming pod. Okay. Request refueling. So we're going to talk about both of them today. So Request rearming. First of all, the missile, the AGM-122 started life as the AIM-9C back in the, what, 60s, early 70s, 60s, I think. Um, it's an AIM-9 variant that is, instead of an optical, uh, sorry, instead of an IR sensor in the front, they had an anti-radiation sensor. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same as a Sidewinder um, B, I believe. Note at this point that it's a small warhead. I think it's about a 22-pound warhead, which is very small, so it doesn't do a lot of damage. Often, you'll have to fire more than one missile at a target to destroy it. As for the range of the missile, it's quoted at just under 9 miles. Now, bearing in mind that this is calculated, I think, for you being at a high altitude and lofting the missile, in reality, you'll almost always, when using this missile, be low using the terrain to mask yourself complete. from radar, and therefore, I tend to get more like four or five miles out of it. There's nothing particularly clever about the missile. All I do is uh, aim my aircraft in the rough direction of a hostile radar emission, and it will then give me a tone when it's locked onto that ra radar emission, and then you fire it, and it'll track towards that emission. It won't tell you how far away that mission is, it won't tell you what type of emission that is, and like I said, it won't tell you whether it's hostile or friendly, so you have to be very careful with these missiles. So let's look at the DECM pod. So the jamming pod is to jam hostile radars that are trying to basically track me and fire missiles at me. So in the, today we've got a mission where we are here, we've got to fly uh, 20 miles or something to attack this radar here. We know roughly where this radar here is an SA-6 and it, with SA-6 launchers and so it's an active SAM site. My jammer will receive the signals from that hostile radar, detect that it's being painted by the hostile radar and counteract that by sending white noise and fake transmissions back to that radar in the form of radiation. And that helps disguise our position to that radar so what happens as long as we're out of a certain range of that radar basically it won't be able to track us it'll be able to get our direction but it won't be able to get our azimuth our aspect our speed and our range and without that it can't fire a missile at us now it's only effective up to a certain range within a certain range known as the burn through range it's much less effective or not effective at all against that hostile radar in which case it would only have a minor effect on the radar's track at the hostile radar's track ability so like i said in a mission where in a seed mission where we're going to be using these sidearms we'd usually use the DECM pod in conjunction with it so let's have a look we've got it's this knob down here here we've got off we've got standby standby is uh, warming up if you've done a hot start like I've done here it will already be warmed up and ready to go you've got your built-in test there you've got your receive mode this means it will only transmit radiation when it's receiving a radar and again it doesn't know whether that radar is hostile or friendly it'll just um, treat all radars the same and the RPT mode there means that it will not wait until it's receiving a radar. In this case, it will just transmit noise all the time. I don't know why you'd want to use that. I always use it on receive mode. So that's the DCM. Now let's look at setting the sidearms up. So I'm going to go to my stores, select the sidearms. First thing you notice is there's a lovely big tone. Because it's the similar to a sidewinder, you get a tone like this while it's searching. And it searches with a bore sight in the center and it fans out in a cone i don't know how big that cone area is but i'm guessing about 30 degrees either direction something like that um, when it gets a lock on a hostile radar then it will change tone and it'll become obvious when that happens and that's the cue to fire at that point remember there's no ranging information note that it automatically uh, jumps to air to ground mode when we select the sidearms other thing to remember is that we must have our ir call on this will call the seeker head 
um, and uh, it, to stop it from overheating while it's searching. The only other thing to mention is that we're going to use both of these in conjunction with our RWR or our Electronics Warfare page. So we'll be open on this Electronics Warfare page. I've done a full video on it, so I won't go into it in detail. But this is how we search for the radar. The only way to find this radar is to use our RWR here. We're going to help jam it with our DECM pod here, and we're going to fire missiles at it with our sidearms here. Right, so let's get airborne and let's get searching for this radar. Right, so we're in the air and we're searching for the target. We know he's roughly in this direction somewhere, but we don't know. Left, right, front, back. Just that he's in with a kind of 20, 30 mile radius. So what we're going to do is we're going to head along. We're going to keep it about Angels 5 uh, angels five and 400 knots or above, giving us plenty of energy in case we need to dive and dodge. And when he turns his radar on, we're going to pick it up on our RWR here and we're going to be able to get his azimuth from that. And then we're going to roll in for an attack. So let's just level ourselves off. Uh, turn on our countermeasures to auto. Oh, we've got them turned on already. Make sure they're an automatic there so that we can uh, chaff and flare if needed to for the countermeasures. Right. And there he is. Uh, what we can see, he's almost at the three o'clock position there, right there, and probably relatively close. Uh, so we're going to keep going now until he spikes us, <laughs> which is right now. So we now we know exactly where he is. So it's another three o'clock. So we are heading 180. And if he's on our three o'clock, that means he's on pretty much exactly 270. So right there. So what we're going to do now is go to a diving left turn to get low so that he won't be able to fire missile at us and we'll break his lock. Then we're going to turn in onto bearing 270 and head straight towards him low and get ready to fire our missiles. And we're going to arm our missiles all at the same time. So head to ground. Major Master Arm is on. Down we go. So we want to get low to put some terrain between him and us so he can't fire at us. Now we're going to make a tight turn towards 270. At this point I mustn't forget to say to fire the weapon we're going to be using trigger, fire gun, launch, sidewinder, sidearm. Power on. Two seven zero. So we're pretty sure is on this heading. Now we're going to go in fast and we're going to go in low, so we can catch him just at the right moment, so he doesn't have enough time to fire at us, but we have enough time to fire at him. So we know he's on this heading, but where and how far we just don't know. Because he got a lock on us, that probably means he's even within ten miles. So that's something we know with moderate certainty. Four hundred knots. That's good. Okay, so we've got him again. He's off to our one o'clock and you heard the tone of the sidearm has just changed um, and very shortly we'll get a full lock on him and this will move to wherever the guy is. He's on the one o'clock so he's on that direction somewhere. As soon as we get that then we're going to fire the missile. Before we fire the missile we're going to do a slight pitch up, not too much pitch because we'll lose track about five to ten degrees just to give it an extra bit of loft. That loft will help it uh, over any tar any objects like um, vehicles or uh, houses or trees or whatever. So turn to one o'clock. Got a lock and magnum and immediately turn out. And we've got him. Deselect our sidearms. Carb destroyed. Right, that's pretty good. I haven't really got much more to say about that. That's how I would recommend doing an attack with a sidearm if you don't know exactly where the target is. And even if you did know where the target is, you pretty need to do that. Pretty much need to do that kind of low attack anyway, because the missiles that you'll be fighting against with a side one, sidearm will almost certainly be a longer range than your sidearm. Um, okay, that's all I've got to say. I hope that helps, and I'll see you later.